And what we what we are going to be talking about is the <clears throat> the great reset. So I'm not sure uh, how many of you have uh, heard of this term. Uh, I know I, I watch a lot of uh, Christian television. Uh, like I like I was saying <clears throat> before, there's uh, probably at least four uh, programs on uh, Bible prophecy that I watch every week. Uh, you know, I try to stay up on uh, things uh, in the area of prophecy. Uh, then there's a, uh, uh, I try to watch Quick Study uh, with uh, Rod Hembry and his family. Uh, so, you know, I try, uh, you know, I, I mainly uh, use my television, you know, for educational, uh, Christian educational purposes. Now, there are uh, those occasional uh, sitcoms that I like too. So I, I'll be honest with you. I like, I like to watch those uh those sitcoms uh but i you know i, I get a lot of uh things uh by watching uh what's going on on some of these programs and the big thing that's been out you know probably this year uh is the great reset so i don't i don't know how many uh people have heard of of the great reset uh but you know we're going to uh look at it today and, uh, you know, as far as Christians, you know, what what should we think about the Great Reset? Uh, so, you know, even, the, you know, this might be a term as you uh, read uh, or look at that PowerPoint slide. Uh, this might be a term that you say, man, I have absolutely no idea what, what you're talking about. And then there might be others that are out there that will say, well, you know, I've heard of, I've heard the term, but I'm not sure exactly what it means. And then there's others that might say, well, you know, I, you know, I, I have some understanding of what the uh, the Great Reset is. Uh, so, you know, we're going to try to explain it to you this afternoon. Uh, try to look at some things from a, a biblical perspective, and and as Christians, you know, how what you know, what should we think about uh, this whole idea of the uh, of the Great Reset? All right. So the objectives of this lesson today, you know, I thought that I would start out uh, by telling you what. This, this, this is what you should walk away uh, from uh, this today, uh, to get Christians to consider the Great Reset, to get you thinking about you know, the Great Reset and, and what is it. Uh, secondly, to remind Christians about a, a coming global system that the Bible does say that there is going to be a, a coming wor one world system uh, and, you know, as I get into the lesson today, you're going to see uh, that's pretty much uh, what this uh, global reset is talking about, you know, uh, resetting things to, to a one world system. And then uh, as Christians, we need to understand the times. Now, you know, as, as I listen to these uh, uh, Bible prophecy programs, one of the things that the guys are saying is that uh, that pastors are not teaching this kind of stuff. You know, they're, they're teaching other things, which, you know, are good things, you know, teaching things from the Bible. But as far as a lot of prophetic things, and I don't, I don't know if you, uh, you know, I, I, I love teaching Bible prophecy. Uh, so, you know, hopefully I don't fall into that category of pastors that try to avoid these type things. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, pastors that are not teaching this kind of stuff. Uh, so that's why I'm glad that uh, we post it on the uh, website so that uh, people can go back and, and look at it later. Or, you know, if you know somebody that wants uh, more information about this topic, uh, that they would be able to go and watch this video uh, that, we're, that we're doing right now. They'll be able to go and, and watch this and see, you know, what the Great Reset is. But uh, the Great Reset is definitely uh, something that's current in our culture today. And so we need to understand the times. So, you know, these are the three objectives of the lesson. Now, the Great Reset. So let, 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 me, let me begin by saying this, that during the tribulation, there will be a one world global system under the Antichrist. And when we think about the, the Great Reset, uh, the stage is being prepared 
under the implementation of the Great Reset. Now, I'm going to point out some things this afternoon that, you know, the Great Reset is not all evil. You know, it's not all bad. I mean, you know, the Great Reset, that, you know, there's some good things that they're talking about. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, there's some things that uh, as Christians, you know, we need to understand and, and maybe even that should cause us some concern. Uh, so uh, the Bible definitely speaks that uh, there is a one world system coming. And I believe that uh, this great reset is uh, a step. I'm not saying that the great reset is the system of the antichrist. I'm not saying that the great reset is uh, the antichrist system. I'm not saying that, but I do believe that uh, as, I, as I'm going to show you this afternoon, that it does uh, lay a foundation, that it does uh, set the stage for the implementation of the uh, one world uh, government, the one world global system under the Antichrist. In Revelation uh, 13, 16 through 17, we see that the ultimate objective of the Antichrist system is to control. Uh, that's, that's what he wants to do in, in Revelation 13, 16 and 17. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name so here we see the the system of the antichrist and notice what it says here uh that nobody can buy or sell uh unless they have uh the mark of the beast and and so you know uh this this is uh, the, the one world uh, economy that uh, globally, uh, the only way that you will be able to buy or sell is if you have the mark of uh, or the number of, of the beast. Uh, and so that's the system that's coming. Uh, you know, and if you have uh, <clears throat> been with me for a while in my teaching, you know, I've taught on the Antichrist, I've taught on the tribulation. And, you know, the Bible is very clear that uh, during that seven years of tribulation upon this earth, that uh, there will be a global uh, one world system. Uh, so, you know, again, uh, this is where everything is headed. You know, uh, you know, no matter what people uh, say about where things are today, this is and, and, you know, again, I know a lot of people probably would not agree with what I'm teaching this afternoon. Uh, because, you know, they, they would not see the connection. And, you know, even some Christians might say that, you know, well, you know, that sounds like conspiracy theory to me. Well, I mean, let's, let's, let's start by saying that the Bible is very clear that there will be a one world system. So, you know, we have no question about that. So then let's look at, well, you know, what is this reset and, and you know, in what ways is it connected to uh, this one world system? All right. So, uh, the Great Reset is a creation of the World Economic Forum. So I don't, I don't know if you ever heard of the, the World Economic Forum, uh, but its founder is a, a guy by the name of Klaus Schwab. Uh, he is the founder of the World Economic System. And uh, again, this is the Great Reset is a creation of the World Economic System. Now let's look at the background of the World Economic Forum. Uh, it was founded in 1971 by again uh, this this gentleman named Klaus Schwab. And every year, uh, the elites meet once in uh, Davos, Switzerland. Uh, they come uh, to talk about world issues. Uh, uh, you know, and, and one of the issues uh, on their agenda is, uh, you know, the, the environment and, uh, you know, uh, making things green. Uh, and so we'll, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, this afternoon, too. Uh, but, you know, uh, people laugh and they say that, you know, these guys come together to meet, uh, to talk about the uh, ecology and, and talk about the environment. Uh, and you know, talk about how we can eliminate you know gases and all this other kind of stuff, and yet and still they all 
they all fly to Switzerland on their private jets. Uh, so, you know, that's uh, uh, one of the things that's, that's, that's pointed out. And so you may have even seen these, these guys coming together. You know, there's, you know, uh, people from, uh, you know, Canada, uh, France, uh, you know, just all around the world. Uh, that they come together once a year and they discuss uh, issues related to globalism. And that's, you know, that's, that's their objective is to talk about globalism. How can we make the world one? Uh, and, and they have uh, three pillars uh, as far as this great reset is concerned. Uh, they talk about justice. You know, when we think about, uh, you know, uh, feeding the homeless and you know, you know, people being treated uh, fairly as far as uh, the legal system is concerned. You know, they're dealing with that. Uh, they're dealing with sustainability. You know, as far as financial sustainability, as far as sustaining uh, the environment, sustaining the globe, uh, and then uh, digitalization, which is, uh, in other words, what we would call technology. So th those are when they talk about the Great Reset. Uh, you know, those are the three pillars of, of the Great Reset. And so what, you know, what they're talking about is how can we you know, reset things? How, how can we uh, move things you know, to this one world system? That is, that, that is the objective, okay? So I, again, uh, I'm doing a thumbnail teaching on this, but you know, if you wanna do more research on it, you know, uh, they have a website. So you can go there and read right on their website you know, what they're about. Uh, the World Economic Forum, I believe is, uh, well, I, I think I got it referenced here a little bit later, but you can go and you can find out, you know, who are the, 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 the key players uh, in, this, uh, in this system. Uh, you can find out, uh, you know, even more than what I'm going to say here this afternoon, uh, you can find out what their agenda is, right? Uh, so uh, they are the main catalyst behind the Great Reset. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Klaus uh, Schwab, he actually wrote a book and the book is entitled The Great Reset. Uh, and so, you know, they pretty much uh, follow his agenda as they go through things. Uh, now, uh, I've pulled some of the things on their agenda and, uh, and for us to be able to, to look at. Uh, number and, and now again, you can go right to their website and you can see all this, all right? Uh, they want to, uh, shape the economy recovery. So anytime, and, and, and let me say this, that uh, a lot of times uh, they are looking for a crisis situation because it's in a crisis that, uh, that people are more open to change. It's in a crisis. That's why, you know, they, they had a lot, they, you know, a, a lot of their website is devoted to COVID-19 because uh, COVID-19 was a worldwide crisis. And, and as a matter of fact, let me, let me do this and I'll come back. Uh, this is what Klaus Schwab said. Uh, he said this, the pandemic represents a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect, to reimagine and reset our world. So that's, what, that's how he saw the uh, pandemic that was worldwide. He said that, you know, this, this is an opportunity to reset uh, uh, the world stage. And so he made, you know, he made no bones uh, about that. Uh, but again, uh, they, they, they love crisis situations. You know, even the crisis that's going on in Ukraine with the war over there, uh, you know, they're looking at that as an opportunity to, to reset uh, things. And, uh, and so we see that, you know, there, there is an agenda uh, behind what, uh, what they want to do. So uh, they want to shape the uh, economy recovery. So anytime that we go into a recession, uh, they want to be able to uh, redirect uh, how we get back into uh, on, on point. And so, you know, a lot of it is, is going to be promotion of their agenda. And we'll talk, talk about that uh, a little bit later too. Uh, promote, no, no, again, let me say this. All right, so I'm, I'm saying, let me say this, let me say this, right? Uh, there's some good things that, they, that they're for. 
so you know, I, I'm I'm not going to say that uh, that we should throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, no, no, not at all. Uh, there are some good things that they represent and some good things that uh, they are promoting. So I, I do want to say that you know it's just you know what is the uh, un underlying philosophies and attitudes of how they get these things done. So that's that's what we want to keep in mind. Uh, so whenever there's a, uh, a financial crisis in the world, which you know pretty much you know when you look at the way things are, you know from an economic standpoint. You know, uh, you know, the world is in crisis, uh, and so they they want to be able to uh, shape the the recovery of the economic crisis. Uh, human rights, you know, when you look at all over the world, human rights. So again, here goes another good thing: we're all for human rights. Uh, but now here's where you got to be careful as a Christian. You know that a, a big part, a big part of what they uh, represent is the LGBTQI community, right? So uh, they have a very, very strong agenda there. So, you know, we, we would say as Christians, well, you know, I'm, I'm for human rights. You know, I, I believe in justice. So, you know, we would agree. But again, you know, as you study out, you know, what their agenda is, you know, you see it's much more than what we as Christians uh, would, uh, would embrace. Uh, they, they, here goes a big part of, of what they're talking about, harnessing the fourth industrial revolution, and that is technology. So, you know, when you look at revolution, uh, uh, industrial revolutions, you know, we've seen several in our lifetime. And so the big one now is technology. So, you know, they want to be on the forefront of technology. And, and that's where, again, here's where you have to be careful, because now, you know, you get into all this, uh, see, you know, again, I, I, I'm not saying this. Again, you can go on their website and you can read this, right? This is where they get into all these chips, right? That they put, able to put in your body. Uh, and, and again, uh, a big part of this is for tracking purposes. Uh, you know, the uh, artificial intelligence. So, you know, uh, you can keep up with where uh, people are at. Uh, you know, the, the advanced ideas of uh technology so they they, they want to you know the world economic forum in this great reset uh they want to be a part of uh the technology uh movement and and influencing uh the technology of the world and so they want everybody now again keep in mind this is a global this great reset is not just you know for for one place well as a matter of fact let me give you another quote uh from their website right uh, so here goes uh, here goes their uh, website, uh, ww I mean uh, worldeconomicforum.org. Uh, so you should be able to uh, maybe put that in and go to to the website. So notice here goes a quote right from their website: "The world must act jointly and swiftly to revamp all aspects of our societies and our economies, from education to social contracts." and working conditions. Every, every country from the United States to China must participate in every industry from oil and gas to tech must be transformed. In short, we need a great reset of capitalism. So, you know, again, I'm, uh, I'm not making this stuff up. I'm, I'm telling you, you know, right, uh, you know what they're saying right from uh, right from their website. So you can go to their website and you can uh, and you can see this. So you know what is the bottom line? You know it says that we have to act jointly and swiftly to revamp you know every area of our society and economy. And uh, and so you know we need a what? What are they saying? We need a great reset. That there needs to be a great reset. Uh, uh, so. Uh, harnessing the fourth industrial revolution, which is technology, overseeing global health issues. Uh, and the, I, don't, I don't know, in the height of COVID, uh, you probably saw this, that, you know, uh, you know, we had people from the United States, you know, our, our leaders coming on every day. But every so often you would see leaders from where? Uh, who? The World Health Organization, right? And uh, and so you know the, you know, the objective of the uh, uh, of the Great Reset is to get all the health care 
under the World Health Organization. So that if, if the World Health Organization says that we need to do this, that that's what globally, that's what we're doing. If the World Health Organization uh, says, you know, or recommends that this is done, that uh, we're doing that because we're under this one, one system. So, you know, a part of their agenda uh, is to uh, oversee global health issues. Uh, another one is to revitalize global co uh, cooperation. So that means that, you know, we have a, you know, one world banking system, right? And if you look at, you know, all the, the different uh, banking systems that are uh, tied into uh, one global system, it's becoming more and more. Uh, it's becoming more and more. Uh, and so they want to re revitalize global cooperation in every area. Uh, they want every, you know, and, and as I, you know, as I pointed out, it says from what? From the United States to China, you know, so that in and, and, and every, every country, right? Uh, and so, you know, I, I guess what they did there, they took maybe the two superpowers of the world, right? Uh, United States and China. Uh, I know that there's others that could be put in there too but uh look look what they said you know united states and china you know two of the main superpowers you know they have to be uh involved okay so there's that idea of uh revitalization from a global standpoint and then uh restoring the health of the environment uh and that's where uh they talk about you know green environment uh that's where they talk about uh making the environment healthy uh and you know let's so I, i'll say this that you know the bible says in, in psalm 24 uh verse one the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they who dwell therein that the earth belongs to the lord and so we as christians you know we should be concerned about the, the earth the earth we should be concerned about the environment you know we should be concerned about uh, not polluting. Uh, the, so, I mean, you know, we, we share those, those same concerns, but as I'm going to point out here in a second, you know, the problem comes is now when, you know, uh, mandates and things are being put in place to control you. And, uh, and, and, you know, so that, that's where we have to begin to kind of, uh, uh, raise the eyebrow to say, okay, well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm for a green planet, you know, I'm for that. Uh, but you know, who's defining what green is and then what does that mean? Uh, so, you know, we, you know, we want to be able to, to answer those questions. Uh, so here is, uh, their agenda right here. And again, uh, there, there's more aspects to it. And, uh, you know, I would encourage you, uh, if you want to, uh, get a, a fuller detail of what those aspects are that you can, uh, that you can go. To, uh, to their website and, uh, and read more. So, you know, you know what is the bottom line? Uh, the Great Reset is this movement to, and I, I'll say this uh, because it, it, it often, often happens to capitalize on crisis situations, to capitalize on crisis as an opportunity to reshape the world, to, to uh, you know, let me go back here uh, to reshape the justice of the world or to reset the justice of the world, the sustainability of the world and the digitalization of the world that uh, these are the, the three pillars of the of the great reset. All right. Uh, so let me uh, move ahead and uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about this. Uh, this is a little diagram that I put together. So uh, when you look at this idea of the Great Reset, uh, on one side, there is a, a good agenda that is, is for the good things, right? It's for justice, it's for the environment, it's for technology, right? Uh, those are all things that we would agree with, right? Yeah, 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 there needs to be justice in the world. Yeah, you know, we need to have a healthy environment. Yeah, you, we need to advance, te technology needs to advance. You know, we would we would agree with that. Uh, and then way on the other end, and here's where you have Christians at, because now you got all these conspiracy theories, right? That behind, you know, 
every green deal is Satan, right? Uh, behind uh, this whole issue of these uh, electronic cars, you know, that's just the devil. Uh, you know, when, when you look at uh, some of the social movements of our day, well, you know, that's Satan. So, you know, you got, you got Christians on, on, the, on the other far end. And, and so there's a lot of conspiracy theories. So I want to say that, that there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there uh, about what the, the, the Great Reset is. So, you know, we don't want to fall into uh, this idea of, of getting caught up in conspiracy theories. Uh, but, you know, uh, by, the, by the same token, we want, we, want, we want to understand that the good agenda that, that is there, that there are uh, ulterior motives behind those good agendas. So, you know, we as, we as believers, you know, we need to, you know, study this thing out and we need to be able to fall uh, on a place where we have uh, uh, reasonable uh, concern about uh, what's going on. Uh, so uh, let, let me move into this aspect of the presentation. When we look at the Great Reset, there are some things that, that we need to be concerned about, right? Uh, because again, and I know, I know some of y'all hate me doing this, but I, I gotta do it, right? Uh, we, it says we got to revamp all aspects. We got to revamp all aspects of our societies and economies from education to social contracts to working conditions, right? We need a great reset. All right. So when you think about how that can be done, one of the ways that it can be done is by controlling people, right? By controlling people. Uh, and that is getting people to give up their rights through fear. That if you can take a crisis situation and you can cause people to fear, then they are looking for answers, right? You know, when you look, when you look at a, a crisis, you know, uh, you know, what are people looking for? You know, people are, are looking for uh, solutions to the crisis, right? So if, if people are in a crisis and they're fearful, and then all of a sudden you start coming up with solutions, and then you use these solutions to control people, then I, that, you know, I, I think that that's where the problem uh, comes in at. And, and so uh, uh, if you look at a lot of the uh, Christian uh, uh, theologians, uh, Christian ministers, that are writing on the Great Reset, and there's a lot of them out there. I, I'll give you a couple. Uh, there's one. His name is uh, Mark Hitchcock. Uh, he's got a book. It's called the uh, the Global Reset. Uh, he pastors a church, and he also is a, a professor at Dallas Theological Seminary. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Billy Crone. Uh, he pastors a church in Las Vegas, uh, and he wrote a book on uh, uh, how COVID was used. Uh, to in, in the great reset uh uh so i mean i can i can give you these uh names a little bit later uh there's a, a ministry it's called lion and lamb ministry they had a whole conference on the great reset as a matter of fact alan parr has been on their program uh, a couple of times uh trying to think of uh somebody else that was doing something on the great reset that i was uh that I would, oh, okay, there's a, a group, it's called Prophecy Watchers. Uh, they, they have done some things on the Great Reset. So there's a lot of uh, Christian uh, uh, books, uh, CDs, tapes on the Great Reset. And, and one of the things that they emphasize over and over again is that the, the, uh, the, the Great Reset is is capitalizing, they capitalize on crisis situations uh, because they know, uh, you know, they get, they can get people, you know, people are more vulnerable then. They're more, they're more open to change. You know, they're, you know, they're more open to things that they might not be open to if there wasn't a crisis, all right? So, you know, again, uh, as Christians, you know, we need to uh, be aware when uh, crisis situations are being used to control us, right? If, uh, if they're there to help us, right? And to help us take care of the issue or the problem that we're dealing with, then 
that's fine. But, you know, we need to be discerning when it rolls over into the area of control, because, you know, this is this is a part now, you know, again, they want to the great reset wants to control everything, you know, and uh, and reset, you know, the, the, the world stage. Uh, so, th you know, this is something uh, that we need to uh, be aware of. Uh, second is the great reset uh, moves toward authoritarianism, right? And so, you know, what is that? Uh, then that's where you have mandates, you have lockdowns, you have cancel culture, you have loss of free speech. Uh, you know, they, 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 they say it's, it's my way or the highway, you know, is, is no other way, you know? And, and you know what? Uh, this guy, Billy Crone, uh, he's actually written a book uh, and, uh, and it talks about, I can't think of the name of it now, uh, but it talks about that there are three media outlets that control the media of the whole world. Three media outlets that control the media of the whole world. And that, that they all, you know, they, they might fall under different organizations, but they're all working off of the same narrative. And, and so one of his points uh, that he makes is that they control what you hear. Now, uh, I didn't want to believe this, right? But, you know, there's certain things that are not going to make it to mainstream uh, media. Why? Because it's, it's controlled. You know, if, if you look at, again, the Great Reset, you know, what do they want to do? They, they want to control the narrative. You know, so it, it's going to be, you know, you're going to hear what they want you to hear. And, and so that's why I, I, I really urge us as Christians, you know, to, to do our research, you know, to, to uh, what, what, what did Paul Harvey used to say? Uh, we need to be Paul Harvey's, right? And this is the rest of the news. This is the rest of the news. Uh, because, you know, uh, it's, they control what, what we hear. If, if there's something that uh, in the narrative that they don't want us to hear, Saint, you're not going to hear, it, right? Or it's, it's going to be, you know, or, or here you see right there, loss of free speech, cancel culture. Uh, if if somebody speaks up, then what are they going to do? They're going to cancel, you know. That you know that you know they're they're going to either, you know, if they're getting any type of uh, funding, they're going to take their funding away, or you know they're going to start getting pressure from their jobs. You know, even you you look at a, a lot of the Christian uh, professors that they have had to leave teaching at secular universities. Why? Because they believe in creationism. And uh, they, you know, and, and even though creationism, as I've taught before, has more credibility than evolution, but because the narrative is what? The narrative is evolution. And so if you say anything against evolution on the, on the college campus, then you know, either when it comes time for your tenure, you, you, you're you not going to be tenured or they're just going to outright get rid of you. Why? Because they control the narrative. And so, you know, we need to realize that the media controls the narrative. Uh, and again, I didn't want to believe this. And, uh, you know, when, when people were telling, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't believe that. But then I started, you know, I just started seeing things where I'm, you know, what, what, what's that things that make you go, hmm. <laughs> right things that make you go hmm how come we haven't heard about that you know and then you know they, they'll tell you that well you know this is some kind of wacko or you know this is a a person who uh you know has an axe to grind and but if you go and research some of these things you know you find out that hey you know this this person had uh, there was some legitimacy behind what they were saying and and so you know again uh when when you see this authoritarianism uh, then, you know, and, and, and it's a part. It, it, so again, what am I saying? You know, the Great Reset has a lot of good things that it's about. You know, again, I'm for uh, health care. You know, I'm for a clean environment. You know, I'm for social uh, justice. I'm for human rights. I'm for all that, right? But when you take all that and you wrap it up in the package and then you put it out there but then there's, there's these other, now you've got these underlying things, then you know, there, there's reason uh, for concern.
So, you know, this whole idea of authoritarianism is something uh, to be aware of. Uh, here goes one right here. Uh, again, replacing loyalty to nationalism with loyalty to globalism. So, I mean, what, you know, the reset is about global. So, you know, what, 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 you know, what, what are you going to be hearing, you know, when they're trying to re get you to replace nationalism? You know, and again, I, I, let, let me be the first to say that America has its share of problems, you know, from a racial standpoint, from an uh, 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 economic standpoint. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to close my eyes and hide behind a rock and say, man, this is the greatest country since sliced bread and there's no problem. No, I'm not going to say that. But you know what? If you think about uh, in reference to the rest of the world, and I know some of us have been in places around the world where we've seen that you don't have the right to speak up. You know, if you if you say something, uh, you know, that's it for you here in America. The, the fact that people can say what they want to say, you know, is, is, is a part of being American. You know, this whole idea of, of nationalism, you know, even if, if somebody doesn't want to stand or doesn't want to take off their hat when the national anthem is being played, right? That you got the right to do that. Now in other places, you, you know, that, that might be met with swift opposition. Uh, you know, I, I, I was watching uh, this one uh, documentary and uh, you know, there was a guy on here, he said, if anybody disobeys, shoot the kill, shoot the kill. I said, uh, wow, you know, that, I mean, that, 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 was the, that, that was coming from the leader, you know, shoot the kill. So, uh, you, know, we, we, you know, we live in a, a country uh, where you know we can express you know our our opinions and express our opposition uh and and so you know but in this global economy that you know they try to get you to turn away from nationalism and become more committed to the globalism so what do they tell you, you know hate patriotism right that uh you know and, and you hear all these subtle comments right you hear all these subtle comments about you know america's a bad place and you know uh you know, I mean, you you just, you you hear it, so I, I don't I don't want to you know get political now because I'm trying to I'm trying to keep this uh, this presentation from being political, uh, but you know we hear it right where people speak out against against our country, and again you know I, I'm the, I'm a, I'm gonna be one of the first ones to say that this this country is not perfect and we got our share of problems, uh, uh, loyalty to individual groups right instead of you know, being loyalty to our country, loyal to our country, uh, you know, let, let's, let's be loyal to the groups, right? Because why? That takes away from this whole idea of nationalism and it, and it gets us to focus on, uh, you know, something else. And then that way, when the global uh, agenda opens up, that, you know, people will be more susceptible to the global agenda. And then to undermine, ignore, or destroy the laws of the country. You know, when, you know, we have certain laws and we try to you know, destroy, uh, ignore, or undermine those things. Uh, then you know, you know, we, we need to that needs uh, we need to raise an eyebrow uh, concerning that. And uh, and then uh, let me say this, uh, and and I'll close with this right here. And uh, that is an unbiblical agenda, right? I mean, so a part of the the Great Reset, you got you got to look at their whole agenda. You know, it's 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 not. Uh, you know, pick and choose, right? This is their whole agenda. And so, you know, their whole agenda is this is this gender identity issue. And so they identify a lot of other genders than, than male and female. And then if you look at this uh, great reset, God is nowhere in it. Uh, you, you can uh, search from the, the beginning of their website to the end. God is nowhere in it. It's, it's totally humanistic. And, and so, you know, that, that should cause us, you know, to, uh, to raise an eyebrow. No, again, I, I know probably the, the attitude and the feeling is, well, you know, you got, you got uh, Allah, you got Yahweh, you got Jesus Christ, you know, you got all these. So, you know, why, why, what God are you going to put in there? Uh, but the, 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 to have a, a purely humanistic agenda, you know, uh, is is a little concerning I mean, for for me as a Christian, because you know uh, what I believe and what a part of my life 
is God, that God is a significant part of my life. And so, you know, I, I, I have a problem, uh, you know, accepting a, uh, an agenda, a whole agenda. And again, I, I know that God, we can't make God be in everything. I, I mean, even though he is, even though he is, I understand that. But I, I just feel as a Christian, I feel a little uncomfortable, you know, just uh, totally Xing God out of, uh, of these things. So uh, let me say this, uh, you know, the bottom line is that uh, the great reset is, uh, there's some good things in the great reset, uh, but you know, you have, to, you have to examine the underlying uh, motives and issues about how they get it done, right? That, that, that needs to be of concern, how they get it done. Uh, Cause again, there's some good things in there. Uh, and then when ultimately, uh, when we look at the Bible, uh, we see that it definitely speaks about a, a one world global system uh, in Revelation 13. And so uh, the great reset might not be that, that system in Revelation 13, but it definitely is uh, setting the stage for that system. So now, you know, I'll say this now, I'm sure that there'll be some people in here that uh, don't agree with what I said. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm open to uh, hear and, uh, you know, I, I ain't gonna be mad at you if you don't agree. I'm just saying that this kind of has, yeah, as I've studied, and I, I must confess that I've, I've primarily studied, you know, mostly Christian uh, scholars and Christian experts in this area. So I've, I've looked at it from that, from their perspective. And so, you know, they're, they're going to give the perspective from, you know, the, the, the Bible. And I, I, I'll tell you this, that, you know, I actually went a little soft because if you if you go in some of those uh, sources that I turn you on to, uh, they name names. They are very, very pointed about it being a satanic agenda. So I didn't get into all that. You know, I, I tried to you know, keep it as as uh, as vanilla as I could. But if you look at some of those other uh, uh, presentations, uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, they name names and they, uh, uh, they say it's Satan is behind it. So I, I'm, I'm just going, let me just, I think I said enough. <laughs> All right. Questions, comments, snide remarks. 